Welcome back to Max's Garage Mahal. Well, you guessed it. Oh, by the way, Patton says it right on it. Patton heater. And that's what we normally refer to these things as because that's what I've always had. Pretty much until the last few years where you see Utilitech, Intertech, and some other labels just spray painted on there. So they're all pretty much the same thing. They all have the same parts. Now, what this one is doing is it will not turn off. It stays on all the time and it's on the lowest setting right there which is called off. And if you'll notice when I plug it in over here it is not off. Can you feel the heat coming off that? Radiating off that? That's in the lowest setting. That's in the highest setting. And that would be in the highest setting on the thermostat. But as you can see, when you turn it off, it doesn't go off. So let's uh, investigate and see what the problem is. Now we've already done a video on this and it wouldn't. That <laughs> I'd messed with that heater before I started the video just to see what the problem was. So we would uh, know when we got in there. So let's do this. Let's whoop this thing apart real quick. And you've got six screws. I haven't taken any of them out yet. Just like I did on that video the other day, which I should have done. I did not. But we're going to do this real quickly. And then you can get to see the logo on the back of my sweatshirt here. As you kids call these days, hoodie. Pretty nice, isn't it? Looks just like that up there almost. Alright, I'm almost ready to be out of your way. Should have brought the right size screwdriver a bit, but I didn't. This was already on here from doing some work on a on a uh, fluorescent light that I converted to LED. Alrighty, now then, we're going to take this thing, set it up like that again, we're going to plug it in, okay, and let's move that down a little bit where you can see the machine, okay. It's on, you can see the red light. You probably hear it if I'll stop talking. Okay, I'm gonna warm my hands up because it's pretty cold out today. Otherwise, I wouldn't have on a sweatshirt. Okay, now we're gonna unplug it just for a moment. We're gonna take the back off with all these screws so I don't continue to keep scratching my nice workbench. All right, we're gonna set this thing in here turn this around and turn this into a stand like that right there. Now, this thing is not very clean inside. I'll clean it out. But, alright, the momentum weight is working just fine. But, it is not moving that switch. It's not interrupting that switch like it should. So here lies the problem. It's the same thing as normal. The thermostat on this thing is, it also is a momentum arm switch, which means if the machine gets tilted forward or back, then the little weight in there, if it gets tilted back, then this no longer is in line with the, with the machine. So it breaks open, forces open the contacts. Well, it can't do that for some reason. I would say it's because the contacts are welded together. All right, so let's pop the, and it's a cold, the, ho the cord just stiff as it could be. Let's see if we can pop this thing apart here. Boy, these screws, these thinking things never want to come off, do they? Okay, I'll go get the tools. I didn't know I was going to do this video, so I mean, everything's always... <laughs> It's never scripted around here, so hang on a minute. Okay, while we were at it, we grabbed a number two Phillips bit for this, and we grabbed a pair of channel locks. That took very little effort compared to trying to do it by hand. 
and we're going to unscrew the nut, put it right over there, push this sucker back through, and as you can see here, when we get this switch out, it has, and it's unplugged, it has two female connectors that goes to two male spade or male connectors on the switch. So let's pop that off and we'll get it up here where you can see it. And I see the problem. And hopefully I can get it where you can see it as well. Okay. Yeah, buddy, that's really a problem right there. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to see if I can hold this up where you can see it and put my hand behind it. Alright. Now then. My white hand here. Let me see if I can get you a little tighter. Alrighty. Now can you see right in here, can you see the little contact points? They're supposed to be round and flat so that we make contact good and flat here. This has got a little barb sticking out on the bottom of it. That little barb is the problem. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me take a picture of that sucker and I'll post a picture in there see if I can get you closer up with that. And I'll do that in front of you with this here. Phone. This is a Motorola Moto G Dallas 5G 2022. What's out of date already, isn't it? Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's get a photo up here, and it's called a photo, so that's good. And I'm gonna see if I can get a picture of that where you can see it really well. Get my finger behind it. Maybe blow it up. Hey, blow this thing up. Okay. Now then, blow it up. I'm going to do it right in front of the lens there for you. Right down there, I'll put my thumb or finger behind it. That's a recording. I don't want a recording, I want a photo. Photo, here we go. Now then, well, this live action stuff always takes a lot of time. It doesn't always work out the way we want it to. Let me come back out where you can see the whole process. All right, we're going to use a double sided file. That's all it is a double sided file, it's a fairly fine one. All right, so we're going to take that double-sided file, and you see this momentum weight here? We want to keep this flat with that, so we don't want that to move. So we're going to hold that so that we can run the file through it, and we want to make sure that that file moves straight up and down, and it does not go this way when you're filing, or this way. You want to make sure it stays straight up and down. And the reason for this is we want that to be good and flat. Oh man, that thing was welded together. And it only had a small contact point, but that small contact is sticking out far enough that it will not allow that to break loose. Wow, that's pretty quick. It's almost there. I want to make sure it's all the way off. I'm going to get it where it's got that little tip broken off or, or ground off first. And then I'll go in here and I'll make sure these things are parallel. And I'll do that with as much tension on them as possible.
There's actually one of those on both ends. Okay, now then, let's do this. Let's take that thing all the way over to where it's got as much tension on it as possible and just see if it's making the contact that we need. And it's just barely dancing on it. That's not what we want. So we've had to file quite a bit off. So what we want to do now is make sure that I'm going to get a pair of needle, a couple pairs of needle nose, and we're going to reform this arm so it's now got a little dog leg that way and that way, so that that contact comes over it and it slams together when you turn the heat up on this thing. So be right back. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing now where you can see it. And I don't have it 100% perfectly square. I'm not happy with that. So I'll continue until I get it square. But it's got about a 40% contact point there. And that's more than enough. That's more than it was from the factory. But I'll have to reform a little bit. And the way I'm reforming that is there's a little place right in here that you can bend to bring that in this piece of metal right here inward and I'm telling you don't do this at home this is for entertainment purposes only this is effective this does work but I'm not telling you to do it I'm not telling you that you should try it I'm just telling you this is the way I fix mine so uh, don't do this at home I mean let's face it guys uh, as they say on street outlaws you don't have to be stupid and you know you don't want to be so don't try this at home I know you're going to, but don't anyway. All right, so now I'm going to bend this a little bit further. You can say there's a, there's a factory place in there where they tweak these things just a little bit to make them come a little bit closer together. And they don't spend a lot of time making them perfect. And I'm not going to either. But the main thing is make them where they don't make contact when it's off. And so I know it's you can't see it me doing that, but I'm going to show you now how the angles are adjusted so that these things are making curve in and in like that. So all right, so right there she's off. There is zero contact, and she barely turn it on. It's got a good contact. And I'm going to do my best to show that to you. Probably can't. But I'm going to give it a shot. All right. Now then. There she is off. You can see there's barely contact through there. I can't ever see that dog on a little monitor to tell you whether or to see what y'all can see. Sorry about that. I think you can see it right through there. Okay. Now I'm going to start turning this heat up. Right there, it's already making full contact. And that's probably a sixteenth of the heat cycle or the heat temperature that we're going to put in it. So I'm going to disconnect that, turn it off. I'm going to plug her in, plug it in here. I'm going to run it back through the hole, put the bolt or the nut on it just so we can plug it in and that'll be up out of the way and I won't have to worry about it getting shocked and all the haters out there telling me what I did wrong and if y'all are so good at this you should be doing it and showing me how to do it so I don't have to worry about showing others alright now I'm not going to tighten it up yet because I may want to do some more adjusting but there it is run the wire this direction and we're going to plug it in and the machine is off. You see the fan? It is not turning. There you go. Turning. Now it's not. Okay. Take her on up. Now that sucker stay on until the cows come home with it turned up that high. 
And that's what you want. Now then, let's turn around this way. And turn that down. I'm going to get a thermometer and we're going to read that. At least I thought we were. I guess I loaned my stinking digital thermometer out since the other day. That can keep blowing stuff out. Anyway, that's nice and warm. And uh, as you can see, it's on. I'm going to adjust it a little bit closer, more closely so that it goes off almost all the way down. So let's do that. And we'll turn it back around here. We're going to take the nut off. Wow, finger tight, can't get it loose. I'm stronger as an old man I thought it was. All right, now we're going to pull this out. That gun, that's hot. <laughs> Should be though, huh? All right, now then, I'll we'll pull the wires loose. There's one. Other one. So I thought. Sometimes you gotta go together to back apart two or three times these things, get them exactly the way you want it. And until it's working properly 100%, then uh, well, burnt myself good on that. On that. Uh, the motor, didn't I? Okay. Now then, let's see. Stay. Alrighty. Now then. Okay. I tell you what, I like it right there. I've got the adjustment pretty close. I'm just going to square those points up a little bit more with this file. And like I said, make sure when you run your file through there, you don't do this. You got to make sure that when it goes through, you want to keep that thing parallel to the contact surface, just like that. Just keep it going the same direction and make sure that it is square. All right, now then, let's open her up, or close her up, then let's open her up and see what we like here. Okay, now I'm going to go to the needle nose for the fine, fine tuning. You'll know when you get this thing close and how when you have it square and make sure while you're doing this you keep looking to make sure there's no high points in there. Those high points grow real quickly and you gotta make sure that those things cannot make contact. Well, duh, that's dumb. And uh, otherwise you will not have gained anything and uh, you will not be a happy camper, believe me or not. So you got to make sure that when you do this, there's a point, a solid point right here, it sticks down. Make sure that this outer piece of metal, when it's setting up against that, that when it's off, that opens up those points in there, which right there. Also, here's another thing. When you're doing this make sure that this pointer sticking through here makes a contact and not this but you do want to make sure that when this momentum if the machine falls forward or back that this will open that up to kill the, the electricity so and that's a real fine adjustment you've got to make and it can be a real pain in the tail but that's what you've got to do I've got to 
get them on some white light here, a reflective area. Okay, now then. Now I've got to look down through there with a turn the power on, make sure she's making contact, which she is. Okay, when I come off, do a little tiny spur there that I'm not liking. This file is really, really fine. It's not as aggressive as I would normally use, but that file has got gotten ruined and it no longer files like it should. I've got to get another one. Now then. All right, let's see if we're going to like this any better. Now, by the way, we're going to do another series on these things on these days, and that is to add a momentary switch at the bottom so that it goes through the bottom of your case and when it's compressed, your switch is on, and if the machine falls over, then that will be what turns off your switch here. It will only be a thermostat then, but you'll have a switch then that it sticks down through the case. And when the case is sitting on the floor, it'll compress that, that switch, and it'll turn on your machine. And if the machine falls over left or right, then it'll turn it off because that plunger will come down and open up points. Okay, so... Let's uh, get this sucker in here. All right. We don't need that nut on there to test this. All right, points are open. Did you see the little flash? That's opening up the points. There you go, that's what we want. All right, there's another successful repair in the shop. So we appreciate you guys coming by and taking a look and hopefully this will help you in your endeavors in the, feature, in the future on how you deal with heaters. And this is something I don't tell you to do, and I'm not suggesting you do it. And if you do any of these repairs, then it's on your own. You did it on your own volition. I did not tell you to do these. So uh, if you got any entertainment factor out of this, give me a like, subscribe if you will, hit that little notification bell down there, and uh, share these videos. I sure would appreciate it. And uh, let's help others around the world. Hey, let's be good to each other. And if you, uh, again, got anything out of this, we appreciate you guys coming by Max's Garage Mahal. And as we always say, y'all come back and see us now, you hear?